All right, here we are. We've got our friend, uh, this bud for you, our buddy, right there. There he is. Uh, here we are. We are uh, British Open week. Um, you know, the British Open Championship. You got the field set. Um, as we do for all of the the majors, you know, we've got picks. We've got a little uh, background information, what we're feeling, what we're seeing. So uh, we're just talking a little bit before we started re- recording here. Um, Bud's got not his pick, but keep an eye on Tiger, maybe like a like a top 20 sp- uh, spot, nice flat course. I always love the, um, you know, that like links type golf because it always opens up to you don't have to bomb it. Some of the guys that don't are always a little sneaky ones that kind of get in there. So. Um, yeah, but we'll kind of kick it over to you and then you can kind of give us your pick there at the end or give us, you know, what you're feeling about. Admittedly have not done, I haven't done too much homework on the open this year. And and I'll tell you why truth gun to my head. Couldn't tell you where it is. I don't know if it's at Royal Lytham and St. Anne's. I don't know if it's at Royal. Lith- where is it? Where, where's the Royal open trains. This year? Royal trains. Yeah. Currents. There you go. Cause see, it's not, it's not an open course that makes you go like, holy shit, he won at Muirfield. Jack yeah, won at yeah, Muirfield. Right. That's why he named it Muirfield Village. Everybody knows the old course. I mean, an open's an open, but it's not Carnoustie. There's there's no yeah. – Troon is – all right, so you won at Troon, so good for you. It's still going to be pretty dope. But uh, to that end, I haven't done a lot of preparing for it because it's it's the final major. We know, we know who's playing what right now. Mm-hmm. You know, the die is cast. There's not a lot of shockers here. I really don't – I mean – I, I say this now, but who had Brian Harmon last year? Put your hand yeah, down. You're lying. Nobody, nobody right. had that little guy, you know, <laughs> outside of a handful of mathematician models. So I'm excited about it. I think that uh, the best part about Open Championship season is this week, too, the Scottish Open. Uh, you know, it's it's got a cool story. These The Irish Open, the Scottish Open, you know, the French Open, these national Opens, the Australian Open is what got uh, Joaquin Neiman into the Masters. Mm-hmm. The, the they're gaining a little more you know attention and notoriety and i think the scottish open because it's folks it's their last chance to qualify if they're not in the open yet mm-hmm. and also for the guys who are in it's a nice little tune-up or it's a nice change of pace i don't know if you've been paying attention or if you paid attention to uh to justin uh thomas in his first round he came out guns blazing 64. you know and him and, yeah. and there yeah and there was great there was great videos of him and jordan spieth just playing a couple of rounds early in the week you know buddies so uh, uh, open championship seems to bring out, you know, a different gear and, and, and especially in the big cat, you know, I, I, I don't like to, I, I'm off the Brooksy train. Major Brooks is done. <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah, I've closed yeah. that chapter. I've closed that chapter on my life. <laughs> you know, all good things must come to an end. And, uh, but Tiger look out for him just because of the way he's talking and acting and behaving after, after, you know, the U S open, he was hitting the range again, which shows that his body's kind of physically there. And if he's going to win another major, it's going to be either at Augusta National, we've said this a million times, that lends itself to yeah. experience, past champions, et cetera, with warm weather, or it's going to be a, a nice flat walk at an open championship with good weather. So look out for the big cat this week. Wow. Not, my pick. With your- oh, my <laughs> dark Not my pick. Not my pick. I would say he's a. I would say he's a safe cut. And okay. he's a sneaky good. He's a sneaky good top twenty, maybe top ten. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'd agree. First of all, the Open Championship for a lot of folks, this is this is it. They want they want the champion's belt. They want to be champion golfer of the year. Um, I'm personally, I'm, I'm American. I'm biased to the Masters and the U.S. Open, especially. But uh, for many, many, many golfers, and especially some American golfers, just out of the reverence they have for the game, this is the week that means the most to them. Uh, and also for guys, it's just their last shot at a major this year, or it's going to be, you know, their last shot at a big chunk of FedEx Cup points. So there's a lot on the line, as always, going into an Open Championship. My biggest thing with Open Championships isn't that you're you're never going to be wowed by the scenery in the course. These courses are 150 million years old. Right. You know, yeah. they they do get some they do get some updates and some changes, uh, and some manicuring and whatnot. But by and large, like you said at the outset, you know, they're not they're not they're not too demanding. Uh, famously, Tiger went around. I want to say it was Carnoustie uh, or Turn Mary, one of those. That uh, he he never pulled he never pulled his driver out of the bag. It was just four two irons, four iron stingers. Henrik Stenson won his Open Championship with a three wood off the tee. I don't even know if he had a driver in the bag. So um, and in last year, Brian Harmon putted his way to an Open Championship. You know when the weather was taking everybody out, all he was doing was rolling the rock. So. Uh, I mean, just look for look for the hot hands. You don't want to outsmart yourself this week. I don't think somebody's going to come out of the blue. I mean, obviously, Bryson DeChambeau is, a, is going to be a, a sexy pick. So is Rory. So is Xander. So is Scotty. 
I mean, it's, it's going to be a chalky week. If you're looking for sneaky leverage plays, I, I, don't, I have no idea where to find him. Maybe an Akshay Batia just because he seems to be – I don't even know if he's in the field. Don't even he know. Is. Not even he sure. Is. He is. Good. I think – I don't know. Not yet. Not you yet. pull that out of your, your Scrabble bag. <laughs> he's picked out a bunch I, of leverage. Listen, like, oh, that's a Akshay, great. I've been, if, you're not an, if you're not an Akshay guy, Akshay Batia was at the drive, chip, and putt when he was like 13, 14 years old back in mm. – you know, 2013 when it first started. And they were doing his little interview. He's like, yeah, I'm going to be a professional golfer. He went pro at 17. He was another one of those. Everybody's like, oh, he's going to burn out too early. He doesn't know what he's doing. There's a great story where, A, he met his fiance. I think they're they're engaged now. Hit her up on Instagram, slid into her DMs. He was on a Cornberry Tour event outside of like Wichita or something. And he's like, hey, I'm in town. We should meet up. Now they're together. She was caddying for him for a little bit. He also was the, the kid who got to one of his corn ferry stops. They ran out of uh, rental cars at the company that the corn ferry tour had an agreement with. So he goes to another one. They're like, you're 20. We can't rent a car to you. So homeboy <laughs> goes and gets a U-Haul. So he's resourceful. He's got a couple wins under his belt. He had that heartbreak a couple weeks ago. So a dark horse pick for me actually would be an Akshay Batia uh, to come out of nowhere and maybe catch you know catch lightning in a bottle. Uh, but in, in, in all seriousness... The chalky pick for me is going to be Rory. The uh, first-time winner pick for me is going to be Cam Young. Cam Young Ooh, okay. might actually. Yeah. Cam Young's had a couple of years like of really one. good performances knocking on the door. So look out for those two guys. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. So uh, I'm uh, I'm also rolling with a former winner of it just a couple of years back. Been hot lately. Um, do for one. I'm rolling with Colin Morikawa. Uh, he's been right in the mix for a while. Um, I think he can I think he's got a good shot at it. I wanted to go Oberg. I actually picked him this week as the was because we're recording this at the, the Genesis, which he's right now way out in front. Mm-hmm. Um I think he's hot, but I mean he's probably not gonna have it next week. But I'm rolling with Morikawa for my pick. Um I mean he's been right up there battling top fives for a while now. Um my sleeper is actually gonna be Aaron Rye. I think someone just like Akshay, he's he's been right on the cusp of it and it's you know, like, he's he doesn't have quite as much of the backstory as Akshay, but like all the whole, he's got both gloves. He had the iron covers and yeah. all these stories of him and been performing great lately. Uh, and he's due for a breakthrough. I mean, I think he's top 20 this week for sure. For sure. And he won the Scottish, uh, the Scottish Open a couple of years ago. I think he mm-hmm. won the COVID Open uh, that year. And like you said, performing really well recently. He's been sniffing at the top of the leaderboard. Tommy Two Gloves. I love. I love me some head cover golf. I, I like a man. I like a man who's comfortable with his head covers on his irons. Can't do it myself. Just saying. But <laughs> um, I'm gonna. You know, you can. You can get off of your Brooksy train. Uh, some of us are just built a little different and want to stick with things that might not be broken. I'm going Victor Hovland again, and he's gonna do it. He's gonna. Fucking do it. <laughs> He's gonna make it happen. <laughs> um, no, but I think that this obviously being uh, you know, a European golfer, he's he's accustomed to these kind of courses, I think, a little bit more than most people. So I'm just I, I got a good feeling about it. DraftKings says that it's not a bad pick. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I'm gonna go with that. Hey, Mike. Listen, <laughs> they know what they're doing, the DraftKings people they do this for a living. So I don't, I don't hate the pick. Do you, uh, you're a music guy. Have you ever seen the clips of Victor Hovland when people are like, I here, listen to it. what Victor likes? I love it. It's I like the, it. the, yeah. the, the the hardest, gnarliest, mega oh. death rock. <laughs> and, I mean, kind of kind of stereotypical. I think like Eastern European or either Northern European guys, they're either into that, like the really heavy, heavy shit uh-huh. or some sort of EDM, EDM techno, right. yeah, you right. know, 85 yeah. beats per second nonsense. Yeah. Uh, so no, I, I don't hate a Victor Hovland because he's a resourceful guy as well. And he's fine tuning his short game to a point yeah. where anything's going to be possible with him. So it's going to be a fun week. Uh, I don't know to whoever was picking Colin Morikawa. I blacked out for a second. Uh, he check out the YouTube shot or the social media video of him going lefty at the Scottish open. He's up against one of those bunker lips. Yeah. No oh. stance, flip it over. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, okay. So that's, feet, that's the difference between them and us. I mean, that many no. other things. Um, yeah, I, um, going back to the music thing, it's funny because it's like, so the music I kind of play with my band, it's very like the 1975 and police. So it's kind of like poppy and dancey, but I'll tell you what, when I was, uh, when I was pitching in college, uh, my, 
earbuds where it was uh like under oath it was like the screamo stuff i used to Iron come Maiden. out i used to come out to uh um give me fuel give me fuel give me seven give me five, go. like i used to come out of the bullpen <laughs> yeah. to that dude it was so sick oh my um God. love that Roy sleeper Rock. pick though sleeper pick though Tommy Fleetwood. I'm going to go Tommy Fleetwood top. I top want it. I'm going to say top 10. I'm going to put him top 10. I'm going to make a bold play. That's I safe. Think, I think Tom, that's safe. But Tom Majors. He yeah. shows up in, in Majors. That's why everybody's kind of rooting for him to finally break through. You want it to be at the open. He had that close call in mm-hmm. front of the mm-hmm. home crowd a couple mm-hmm. years you know, recently. Yeah. So uh, I don't I don't hate some fairway Jesus. I'd like to see him break through. <laughs> I love it. Um yeah, it's been it's been great. Real quick though, because uh, I don't think we've really talked about it much. How was your time down at um? Where were you? Was it Georgia? Where were you? At? You, you were at Pinehurst. 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 Yeah. How was that? How much time you got? I mean, it, yeah. it, it, I I ended up barefoot at the U.S. Open. It, it was <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun. grounding. Um, <laughs> that, that, that place was that place was built to host. You know, it was built to host the U.S. Open. I mean, That's Pinehurst awesome. itself. It, you know, stereotypes exist for a reason. It's perfect for buddies trips. It's perfect for family trips. You know, any way you slice it, the town was literally built for golf back in you know I think it's 1895. You see it everywhere mm-hmm. because it's the only land in North Carolina that you can't farm. It's too much sandy soil, so that's why they developed all these golf courses. And uh, it, it was great. I mean, I got my ass handed to me by Mike Strance at Todd Hill Farm. I got some uh, redemption at Tobacco Road. Uh, and then my buddy and I played a 72-hole Stableford match that ended up in a tie after 72 holes. So it was, uh, and, we got to, and we got to follow Tiger for the entire front nine, uh, which was his back nine day one. And uh, we were about 15 feet from him. It was kind of, it was kind of amazing and surreal. Yeah, talk about being talk about fairway Jesus. You're actually next to Jesus. That's great. Yeah. He he is him. He is him. And it's uh, I always said I would never want to fight the crowd, but the guy I was with um, kind of looked at the layout of the map and he goes, "I think if we go here, we can walk for about five or six holes without having to see any crowds." And he was right. There was just this kind of like section of the outside of the course that paralleled the front nine that nobody was on, and we had plenty of shade, so it was just us, mm-hmm. Tiger, you know, Maddie or Will Zalatoris, Maddie Fitzpatrick. Uh, it was great. What a group. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so there you have it. We got the picks here. We got some sleeper picks. You know, DraftKings sponsor us because, you know, we might be making you guys a lot of money because these picks are not solid. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Right. I mean, thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, we knew we kind of crammed this in late night. You're putting the kids to bed. It's the night before my bachelor party. We got a team His bachelor party tomorrow. Let me tell you, we got a Ooh. got a busy weekend here. So, I listen. Is all I want a have fun, be safe. I have to do. I have to say that I'm a dad, and uh, I made it. Through, I made it through my bachelor party, so I feel like I owe that just to like pass it on. Uh, but no, that's if 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 you make it through. I mean, I think I think we we can all say we need to return for the FedEx cup. We need a little FedEx cup preview. Absolutely, we'll clean exactly. up the majors. Yes. And then most importantly, I want to hear what you can tell both on and off camera from the bachelor party. So uh, I'm part of the, I'm part of the group that obviously we're all texting without him. Uh, we were, we got a We got a golf, uh, a golf round tomorrow at one of the nicer courses in our area. Um, two people that we are coming with Jack Nicholas course, Jack Nicholas design Jack Nicholas course. Yeah. Here. It's very, very nice. Um, Two people that we're going with swing a golf club probably just like the Olympics, like once every four years. Uh, <laughs> I love so, that. Yeah, but uh, the other ones, uh, Ricky actually might show up because he's a member at this course, so he actually might jump on with us. So we'll have some cart camp stuff with him. Uh, then Ricky afterwards, run good. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Because <laughs> I can't wait to get, get my ass kicked by a U.S. adaptive open runner up. I'm going to get <laughs> fucking smoked. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm very secure in my game. Watching him put up those numbers in that kind of you know environment makes me want to be mm-hmm. like, I don't want a piece of that guy. Dude, I'll, I'll wait. Dead I'll wait. ass. <laughs> dead ass. Um, yeah, but we'll we'll definitely fill you in. I'll, I'll maybe we'll I'll send you some uh, some videos from the basic bogeys page. And we'll, yeah. we'll we'll check I in with you. Love it. I love it. <laughs> you, you, all, you all are a couple of gems. Hell yeah, but we appreciate your time, bud. Thanks, man. Always. Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.